Hello, my soccer universe. Unfortunately, the Spanish football podcast was a little bit delayed for at least for my listening pleasure. And I always like to listen to that one before I actually give you my roundup video just in order to see whether I missed some stuff. But you know, it's pretty clear what the biggest result was, and that's Valencia against Barcelona gives me again the chance to wear this, admittedly, one of my favorite jerseys, uh, despite its craziness this wonderful Valencia jersey. But we won't start at this one in this roundup. Um, the first result was, of course, Osasuna Levante was Friday evening. Didn't see that one. It was a 2-0 win. Espanyol gets a 1-1 against um, Bilbao. And Raul de Tomas scores a first goal. I think at uh, Bilbao took the lead and then uh, Espanyol equalized. In the second half, and probably cool could have found the winner. And with uh, Raul de Tomas, maybe Espanyol can slowly get out of this. But then we're already at the game of the week. Uh, and I would even argue, nah, you know, there was a Derby de la Capital, there was a Juve Na Napoli, but Valencia Barcelona was definitely one of the three best matchups uh, this weekend. And what a match it was. Um, the third game under Kike Setien, and Barcelona again. Especially first of all, I think had 80% of the possession and no shots. And that tells what the game is. This was possession for possession's sake and not to any vertical movement, any penetration. It was absolutely almost boring and timid to watch. And I really, my first thought, and I had this already when Setien took, took over. It is nice that we want to go back to the possession-based style that Barca was so well known for. But I heard Marcotti say today as well, that style is not in vogue anymore. We figured out how to play against that style. And if you don't make enough movement, if you don't press hard enough to put uh, players out of position, especially if they're like Valencia staying in the back closed, you will have no way of passing it by. And uh, Gabriele Marcotti even said that, you know, uh, it's great to go back, but the inventor of the style that you want to go back to with Setien, Guardiola, is not playing that style anymore. In addition, you have a Messi that will not press as intensely anymore. And I think this is lies at the basis of the problem that, you know, you have the best player in the world, but you need to give him freedom and he's also aging. So you have to manage him a little bit. You cannot play with him uh, the most intense style of soccer. Again, having said all this and you, uh, you see already the result to Neil Valencia um, and I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, the one thing I have to also say, it's only a week that Kike Setien or a bit more than a week that he was in charge. This was the first test. They failed it gloriously. But maybe it's better that it fails early and let's see how they can move on from that. It really seems they need a striker or they need, uh, they need to find a role for Griezmann, which seems to be the, the miss buy of the season in, in a way. And yeah, only with Ansu Fati and some, I don't know. Um, I think the squad also needs to be reju rejuvenated. The first half, despite all possession, was all Valencia. Valencia had the chances. Valencia got a penalty that was saved uh, by uh, was a penalty by Marx Gomez. It was not that uh, greatly taken, but that could have set uh, the tone early. Uh, it was lucky that they didn't go take the lead. Uh, there was one, there were two or three saves by Ter Stegen in there, where I really thought, yeah, uh, with a different goal goalkeeper, it is one nil Valencia at that point. Valencia takes the lead right after the half. Um, wicked deflection. Actually, it was an own goal. Alba, I think that's what they said. I um, see it here in the app now. It's for Maxi Gomez. I think it should, have, it, it should be an own goal. And yeah, was all deserved. I think no one could have com 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 complained. And Barcelona played as timid as their jer jerseys are. I mean, this mint green. Yes, this is one of the... Uh, proper Barcelona colors. I hate those jer jer jerseys and I didn't see a reason for them. I think they could have well played in all yellow and it would have uh, made for a better contrast. Then Barca came. But again, every chance they had, they looked out for Messi, who yeah, did not have his best day. 
Uh, he missed chances, but you have to allow for for, for that. Barcelona came, it also was helped that Arturo Vidal came on. Whenever one to, uh, Vidal comes on, there comes an element of surprise that is... Um, <laughs> on the Spanish football, they say it's non-academic. Yeah, um, Yes, he is not calculable, but I actually think that he should play from, from, from the beginning. I think he gives Barcelona a little bit more edge. Uh, go, go, going forward, and yes, Barcelona probably could have um, could have equalized if Messi uh, hits the header right. If Messi uh, is in this uh, amazing form where and and curls the shot in like he did at Betis, uh, he has another chance where he got blocked. Yes, but you see, we are all talking Messi, and this is also an innate problem. Maxi Gomez with a really nice shot makes makes it two nil, and yeah, that was it. The referee had a few blunders. The first half, uh, he waved on the advantage for Valencia, and just when they were about to really get rolling, he calls back to give MTT a yellow card. That was a clear mistake, and then he confused ev ev everyone when after a corner, Valencia scored a 3-0. There was a foul given, which was similar to the Real Madrid foul last week, um, that I didn't really see as a big foul, but okay. And then he had the corner really taken, and if you see it, yes, uh, in the end it was probably the right decision. Thoroughly deserved. Uh, we had Villarreal beating Alaves 2-1 and Sevilla 2-0 over Granada. I wish I would have seen anything. I saw about a uh, half a minute of Sevilla-Granada. Atletico Madrid continues their woes, 0-0 against Leganes, and I... This will be a test on how Cholo Simeone uh, is looked at. Um, in uh, on the board uh, from uh, you know how the president likes his work is he allowed to have an off year he had a big rebuild uh, the expectations were high and yeah Joao Felice was uh, injured it will take some while I think he with all that he's done for Atleti I think he deserves a two year grace period before you would fire him but Let's see where it goes. It was started a really weird streak in Spain. Celta Vega Eva was also nil nil, and so was Getafe Betis for the longest of time until Getafe gets a penalty in the 88th. And that's converted weird choices by Betis, I have to say. Real Sociedad has no problem disposing of uh, Real Mallorca 3 nil. So they are also back rolling again. After getting pasted by Betis uh, last week, uh, Isaac, Barrenchea, and Porto making the goals. And then all eyes to Madrid, not my eyes. I watched a lot of Serie A. But will Real Madrid get over via, uh, they get the win via the lead or even a point to go in first place? Well, they actually took the lead, which was chalked off uh, from an offside position. Rightly so, although it was narrow, narrow, narrow. Uh, I think Casemiro would have said that it was not a great performance. I uh, well, They were wearing great jerseys. I think I really like this jersey matchup late in the game. Um, after corner cross from cross onto Nacho's head in 1-0 uh, an equalizer for Vardalins chalked off and Real Madrid gets a win. They didn't look great but at least they looked cohesive. They look much more a team than Barcelona does and I have to say they they almost need to get this championship. Barcelona is in disarray, Atletico Madrid is in disarray, Sevilla is one of the most unstable teams in all of Spain. So um, I think this seems to be Real Madrid's to lose. And given that they have so many injuries, I only can expect Real Madrid to get better. So in the table, Real Madrid has a three-point lead over Barcelona, Sevilla... Moves a little bit closer to Barcelona, as does Getafe. Atletico Madrid falls outside of the top four in a long time. Sociedad stays uh, in sixth. Uh, Valencia is in seventh. So they will still be jostling for um, European spots. Uh, then, yeah, we enter the midfield, which I think goes until Levante. Uh, yeah, maybe Alaves, Eibar, even Valladolid. It's like in Italy, we have four teams that are fighting for to avoid re relegation. That's Mallorca, Celta Vigo, Leganes and Espanyol. Um, I find it highly unlikely that Alaves, Eibar or Valladolid would go in there. So yeah, take your pick. This is where things are in Spain. Um, I think Espanyol, given their recent form, they actually might move out of there. But let's see where this will go. 
Anyway, let me know what you watched uh, on the weekend in La Liga, whether you agree with my assessment that I have, especially in Valencia Barcelona game, which is the one game that I really watched with full, full attention. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.